All right, so we just finished another game of soft landing. Um, in uh, this particular game, I wanted to take India. Um, I had first choice, so I did. Uh, primarily because I wanted to play it with one of the uh, powers that start with a lot of points but get a lot of stress so that I can see how that works and mitigating the, uh, the stress of India and trying to maintain its total. Um, I didn't do so well. <laughs> Um, well, I did, I actually was in the lead the entire game, uh, but then I kind of uh, forgot that these, I thought I had enough for military, which would uh, allow me to move stuff around. I did effectively use military in one of my turns to uh, cause uh, green uh, to lose three points. Um, but the second time I thought I was going to be able to do military again, but I didn't actually have the resources that I needed and um, ended up uh, having... Uh, losing points from a major catastrophe and then a minor catastrophe. Uh, so that's just the, my fault. If I had done that properly, I probably would have won the game. But um, I, I believe now, having played India and having played one of these factions, that they are viable. You just have to, um, you have to maintain the points that you have and uh, mitigate the stress and definitely take advantage of the military to blame the stress on other people, essentially. Um, so, Scott, what what would you think? Uh, so I played the opposite strategy. I was playing the European Union, and I was just trying to hold things together long enough for me to get in first place. Yeah. Um, yeah. You started with seven points, and then kind of you know rocketed up to over there. And I was trying to end the game quickly because of that. Like I was telling people, hey, we need to. I was prim primarily talking to China. And saying, hey, China, because China also has uh, a lot of stress. Uh, China, we need to work together to um, cause catastrophes to make the game end faster. China didn't really uh, work with me on that, uh, unfortunately. So it was basically just me uh, having to work towards uh, using my military to cause the South Americans, to blame the South Americans for the world's uh, problems um, before... Uh, yellow, because I feel like I feel like if we the game did go more, you probably would have taken it. Yeah, it just spins. I have spent a lot of resources because you were to prevent the disaster from happen, happening. Yeah, um, although I didn't want to care about that if I was in first. And place. and I did. I was the European Union Alaska, and it was the same thing. I was spending a lot of my resources to to prevent uh, to prevent catastrophes from happening because I did want to score a lot of points. Um, so what what would you think? Um. Overall, it's an interesting simulation. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of seems to give everyone a different role in the global politics and order. Yeah. Um, it does feel like you do eventually converge to the same strategy after some time. It, uh, players behind can get a lot of points quickly, whereas players in front have a tough time maintaining their lead. Agreed. Um, did you? Would you play it again? Did you like it or? I might play it again with a different faction. Yeah. Um, I felt your opinion was seemed kind of scripted in what they mm -hmm. were doing. Yeah, um, it seems uh, past comments uh, for, from last night's game was that uh, uh, it seemed like the strategies are pretty one-dimensional for the different factions. Which, I don't know, this is my second game, so that, that may be the case. But, yeah. What would you think? Um, first, I do really do like the catch-up mechanics inherent yeah. in the game, where if you're last in points um you get to go first and also yeah. um, add the uh, white cubes to where you want yeah that's to a help boost the number of points you're going to be getting when so, it is your turn yeah so you score with these and whoever is first gets to decide which one of these gets more cubes to be able to score more points so it definitely has a power grid like element to it where you want to and that's i think one of the benefits of a fact of the european union is the fact that they do go last for a lot of the games so they can like you, you got like eight points that first turn just from being able to go first. Right. So yeah. However, overall, it's I don't I don't hate the game. I'm sort of meh on it. Yeah. Um, it does have a very high level of uh, complexity, mm -hmm. and I don't think it was just fun enough to warrant that high level of complexity. Okay. Personally, I can really get into like super complex games, but only if it is has enough fun. Uh, elements to make up for that and also um, thematics are also really important to me in game 
And, and you didn't feel this game was very thematic? No, I, like, the, the, I think the way the game works is very on point with the theme that they're going for. To me, it's not a theme I'm really interested in. Okay, so the, the theme isn't interested. Yeah. Um, I think the game is very thematic. I think that uh, a lot of the, I mean, the way that each of the nations kind of work and the way that things happen, as, as, as Scott said, it, it, it almost borders on simulation more than it does, you know, like an actual game. Um, but I feel like, um, I, I don't know, I definitely, uh, if there's one critique that I have after a second play, it's that, uh, as Scott mentioned, it seems like the factions may have just like one optimal strategy. So it does kind of become more Terra Mystica in that way of like, well, you're basically just trying to do this with this faction. And it's just playing that faction. Um, I haven't really seen that much cooperation. I tried to cooperate with China. I tried to cooperate with other players. Uh, I feel like there might be more game in there if there is cooperation. I would have been more likely cooperate to cooperate with you if you didn't have like five more points. Yeah, than that me is at true. That I, I did. I did have more points. I did have more points than everyone for most of the game. And even though I was, I was basically saying, "Hey, Pink, yeah, you're like third, but." you're not going to win if you don't end the game as fast as possible. So what you need to try to do is score as many points as possible and also end the game as fast as possible. So, like, so I'm like, okay, make sure, I'll try to score yeah. as many points as possible, yeah. but not try to end the game too soon. Yeah. I, I, I think that, like, we need to... Because the game ends... Uh, we go one more round after the game end trigger. So I feel like even after you do that, even if you're planning for the end game trigger, you, you, you still have basically one to two turns depending on where you are in that in, in that phase uh, to gain points and I feel like that's definitely something you want to do but yeah I don't know it, it might be I mean even if that is the case where they are um, kind of one dimensional you could play a different faction every time and there's what like I want to say there's at least 10 factions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, so 12 uh, it, it, there are a lot of there are a lot of factions to play to see how it plays out I feel like some of the mid factions so this one India's kind of like on one extreme and and uh, European Union is uh, on another extreme over here it'd be interesting to play kind of one of the mid ones which would be kind of more like South America South America won uh, everyone except me I lost the point um, from minor catastrophe everyone else kind of tied but the tiebreaker was number of tokens on the board so South America um, took it there at the end so I'm yeah I'm curious to try it I think maybe our factions are more scripted because it's very obvious that you want to end the game fast or not end the game fast yeah. but like players like China are kind of in between where yeah, they could have it's, it's pretty, pretty much go any way I wanted I don't think it's the type of game you're going to play a several times to find a new strategy each time you play. Some yeah. wrinkle to... I feel like a lot of the middle countries might make it more interesting just because it isn't so straightforward. Like, do I want to end the game right away or, or not? Like, with the, Europe, with the India and the European Union, definitely India wants to end it as fast as possible. And definitely the European Union wants it to go as long as possible. But with, like, South America or China or any of these, you don't know. I mean, you're kind of in the middle there. Mm -hmm. you, you, could just, you could just as easily, like, like China did, you could just as easily say, hey, I don't really care that much. Yeah. So I feel like maybe just the extreme factions are the ones that might have... I don't know. I, I guess it requires more play. But, I'm I mean... I'm really curious how much um, playtesting the devs did on this. Mm -hmm to make sure that all the uh, asymmetric factions. games yeah I, I, that's the nature of asymmetric games no I, what i've learned from asymmetric games is that no amount of playtesting is enough true yeah right? true like um i I've, i know i know games that have been that, that were playtested for the better part of a decade and still you know have issues with asymmetry so it's i think that's just the nature of asymmetric design is the fact that you're always going to be balancing as people find you know different tweaks and things but i don't know I, I you you mentioned that it's 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 like complex the rules aren't really complex you, you mentioned that it was deceptively it's complex pretty thick rule book here um i i, I, I it didn't take that long to explain the game i feel like True. i i, I well, will give wrap, you, it took a while to wrap your head around the game yeah I, like i i will say that it uh, it, it it is opaque I, I feel like there aren't a lot of rules, but it it does take a bit to understand what you're doing, 
mm-hmm. and what you need to be doing. Uh, the designer definitely does have some great um, footnotes in the in the rule book. Like the the rule book has like just all of these little kind of sidebars that have a lot of kind of notes and stuff, which are really helpful. Um, so. Uh, I think that I will give that the game does have a level of opacity to it, um, but I like that. I like the fact that you know it's it's a thing where you have to play it more, and and every time you play it, it's going to be you know uh, well. I want to try this or I want to try that. Though I do agree with you, Scott. It seems like our factions were the most scripted of the bunch. Yeah. I so. think if you want to play, to get the most out of this game, you want to bring it to a table players that love negotiation and yeah. I, I agree. And I agree. Stabbing people in the back. That's that's what you're going to get. There definitely out of the needs game. to be there definitely needs to be more alliances and stuff if you're playing this game. Yeah. All right. So, um, that's yeah, that's that's my further impressions on this game. Um, I'd be willing to play it more. Um, Probably just to try out the different factions. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I still think it's a really interesting design, uh, just for how tight it is, how 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 you know how much uh, you have to think about with not a lot of because there isn't a lot here. I mean, it's basically just this board, some cubes, and then your player boards. Um, but yeah, I I be willing to try it more uh, and and at least try the different factions. I'd probably try one of the middle factions now to, to see how it works. But yeah, that's uh, that's uh, another look at Soft Landing. 